Seven. Nate, how was your weekend? Um, about a ten. Yeah, like about a, a ten. three and a half. That's too bad. Hey, Cookie, get the names, please, okay? Yeah. Hello, how is everyone today? Is everyone here? Nate, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can I get more monitor, Helen? Hello, people. How you doing? My name's Cookie. Welcome to our show here. How many people are going to be playing the game? You may wonder what this is, unless you've read the video title, then you already know. Hello folks, Surat here once again, and considering I went through the entirety of the You Don't Know Jack game that was released in 2011, till everybody could see just how stupid I really was, I think it's time, now that Steam has released all the old games, kind of updated and able to be played on modern so modern uh, computers and all. I think it's time to try and to go through and see how many of those I can get footage of and kind of show all you good viewers just how much the series has actually changed. The short answer hasn't changed a ton, but it has changed. And you will see how over the course of the next however long this takes me. Probably the better part of a month. Probably. But, enough talking. We're playing You Don't Know Jack. This would be Volume 1 XL, if you're looking for the specific one. That's right, this is kind of the re-release of the first You Don't Know Jack game in the series. The one that started it all, mostly. So, how about I stop yammering? And we actually get into this, shall we? The problem with this is I have to... The problem with this is it doesn't save my sound settings, so you won't get the 60 seconds that you get beginning of everyone unless I want to blare you all out. No, it doesn't save any sound settings. It just kind of re... Even in the sound mixer and all that. Wonderful old technology doing its own thing. So between games... Between recording sessions, anyway, I will have to cut off the first few seconds, etc., 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 just so I don't blare your eardrums out before I can manage to get this screen and lower the sound. So, anyway, let's see just how stupid I am when it comes to 90s trivia. Because this game was released back in the mid 90s. Eh, it's been that long. So, anyway, let's go, shall we? Hello, hello. Okay, let's get a sound check. Sangos, are you there? Yeah. Hey, would you get your finger out of your butt? How many people are playing here? Ah, uh, I love him. Thank you, Cookie. Hey, you're a single player, is that right? All right, could you give me your name, yeah. please? Also, a side note for this, it doesn't care what you put in. It'll display it, and it doesn't have very many funny quotes for it like the other game possibly did. And also, you kind of miss Donnie here after having him in the 2011 version, but hey, you know, you can only do so much. Dang. So anyway. Hey, can you guys try it again? I want to just pick up the pace. I mean, half the speed. Oh, yeah. Uh, are you looking for a seven-question tournament? We're going to go through the whole shebang. Question question question. 30 seconds. Your buzzer is the letter B on your keyboard. What are you doing? What are you doing? I don't know, grab, grab somebody. We, we can't have a show if we don't have anybody operating boob. Come on. 20 seconds. Hey, we got 20. All right. Question comes on the screen. You think you know the answer. You buzz in. You pick one of the choices on the screen. You got that? 10. Good luck. Nine, okay, I need your attention. Let's go. Lose the desktop. Thank you. Let's go to black. Post Major standby. dick action figure. Uzi sold separately. And you notice how it said lose the desktop there? Yeah, it actually does white or black out the rest of your desktop. It's kind of a neat little feature there. Just thought I'd stop and mention it. And my eye is watering something awful. Show where high culture and pop culture collide. Yeah! Hey, how you doing? Welcome to the show. You're playing solo for this show? All right, let's do it. Okay, pick a category. Oh, okay. So, unlike the game you saw before, this is not 
we don't have, you know, hand-picked episodes of a list of questions and all that. No, it's all kind of random. You get three choices for a category at the very beginning, and you pick one and get the question based on it. So let's see, I will just pick whichever one looks good to me at any point in time. You don't have to be human to be stylish. Get ready for some fun, it's question number one, oh yeah! Alright, let's see what we're doing here. You don't have to be human to be stylish. And this one's gonna be worth $1,000. Okay, get your fingers ready, let's get busy. Which of the following could wear a navel ring? Goose, platypus, alligator, or cow? Well, you also notice you're not timed on this. You don't have a timer ticking down. And the questions are worth X amount, but here we go. All placental mammals have navels, so the correct answer is cow. Yeah. Not that the navel ring thing is really caught on yet with cows, but more and more of them are having their tongues pierced. Eh, anyway. Hit me with the category. So let's see. Make out like a bandit. This one's going to be make out like a bandit. A right answer will get you two G's for this question. Okay. I'm sorry I keep pausing, but I want to explain the differences as we go here. Unlike the first one where each question was worth a set amount that ticked down as the timer went on, the questions here are either going to be worth one, two, or three thousand in the first round, two, four, six thousand in the second round, and then the jack attack. They will have a few questions that are based on a timer ticking down, but not very many. So that's, there you go, that's where I was getting some of the, that's, this is what I was brought up on, this is what I know, so some of the 2011 stuff bothered me, a little, even if it was from other episodes, or other versions of the series. So anyway, onward. Okay, we're coming at you. Heads up. Richie Cunningham is to submarine races as Keith Partridge is to apartment over the garage, Muldoon's Point, locker room, or Louie's. I have no idea. Apartment over the garage? I think you might be thinking of Fonzie, and why not? He yeah. is really dreamy. Now the correct answer is... <laughs> Moldane's point. If Keith wants to make out, that's where the action is. Huh. I guess it's hard for Keith to go parking anywhere driving that friggin' bus. Yeah, I haven't seen those All shows right, in years. Here. We need a category. Gandhi and Hooterville. Louis, Would help if they hit the right number. number three. The name of this category is Gandhi and Hooterville. And we will pay out $3,000 for this one. Hope you're ready, because here's one coming at you. If Gandhi were cast in the television sitcom Green Acres, what part would he play based on the literal translation of his name? Farmer, Fred Ziffel, Hired Hand, Ed Dawson, Grocer, Sam Drucker, or Lawyer, Oliver Wendell Douglas? I have no idea. Gandhi. I do not know what his name means. But here's an excellent idea to show you how it times out. Excellent chance. Should have picked There you this. go. Gandhi oh, sure. means grocer. I wonder if you could get beef jerky at Gandhi's grocery store. I don't think so. No, probably not. How about it? Hit me with the category. <laughs> the category behind this question is my up, my down, my pride and joy. And this one's gonna be worth $2,000. Okay, get yourself set, it's time. Which 70s TV character is often called Mr. Eddie's father? Tom Corbett, Ted Baxter, Wilbur Post, or Herman Munster? Eddie Munster? I said Mr., not Monster. Aww. In case you're curious about the correct answer, Tom Corbett from the TV show The Courtship of Eddie's Father. Never saw it. Okay, eh. pick a category. I did see some mash, though. Let's see if I can find that one. Uh-oh, mash uh -oh. butt tit slime chore. That's right, gibberish. It's time for a snickerfish restaurant. All right, now here's your category for this gibberish question. Rarely seen episodes of mash. The opening value is $5,000. And you may rec... Those of you that played the... The uh, online version that Facebook has will be familiar with gibberish. Those of you that only saw my Let's Play of the the uh, newer series wouldn't. Gibberish question. 
It will be explained soon, but this is one of the few times you will see the timer tick down and take your money with it. Okay, now remember, you don't have all the time in the world here. The less time you take, the more money you make. Imagine a very sad episode of MASH where a homicidal maniac comes to the 4077 and kills Colonel Potter. An upset clinger can only manage to get out the following phrase. Malcolm Hack Potter! Let's see what you got. Start typing and hit... Easy. Yeah, nice job, Mr. Kate. How about it? So for those of you that don't know what the gibberish question is, they throw a nonsense nonsense phrase up there that rhymes with something, you know, related to something. They kind of give you a hint, TV shows in that case. But yeah, you've got to figure out what it is based on what it sounds like. There you go. That's what the gibberish question is. A lot of fun, really. Me with the category. Uh, innards. Gotta be quick. Next up, innards. And it looks like you can win a thousand greenbacks for this one. All right. Suppose the folks who run your local organ donor program start paying people for their organs by the pound. Which of these internal organs would you sell to bring in the most loot? Your spleen, your heart, your liver, or your brain? The most loot, the liver. Your liver, weighing in at 2.5 to 3.3 pounds. It's also the tastiest organ, especially on a nice piece of party rye. Come right, on, come on, Keanu, we need a category. Willy Wonka in the U.S. Patent Office. The category, Willy Wonka and the U.S. Patent Office. You get this one right, you got 2,000 bucks coming at you. All right, let's suppose Willy Wonka wanted to focus his confectionery genius on original uses for licorice. For which of these licorice root products could Willy Wonka easily get a patent since it represents an entirely new use? Automobile tires, tobacco flavoring, laxatives, or shoe polish? Some shoe polishes contain licorice. That's Aww. why I give it out to trick-or-treaters on Halloween. Aww. You know what you could have picked? You could have picked this. Automobile huh. tires. Yeah, Wonka used to screw four Oompa Loompas onto his axles, but the gas mileage was terrible. I would imagine it was. How about it? Hit me with the category. Yeah, man. Come along to question. The category is Roger Rabbit's Nocturnal Missions. Okay, this one might be a toughie. It's worth 3,000 bucks. All right, let's see. Fearing an attack by the son of Judge Doom, the residents of Toontown set up a guard post at the city's entrance. If cartoon creatures share the same traits as their real-life animal counterparts, who of the following will be the best entry because he requires the least amount of daily sleep? McGilla Gorilla, Sylvester the Cat, Dumbo the Elephant, or Astro the Dog? Well, you know cats sleep forever. I want to say the dog. More rants or rocks. Nope. <laughs> Too bad you didn't pick this. Uh, Elephants. They sleep only about two hours each day. Dumbo will do a much better job than their first sentry. When he woke up, his gun was gone, his hands were immersed in warm water, and his shorts were wet. Okay, pick a category. Ooh, oh, what's your sign? It's number nine. Here's the category. Oz and Oxidation. Okay, shouldn't be too tough. This question's gonna be worth a grand. Okay, let's get this ball rolling. On the way to the Emerald City, which Wizard of Oz character has a recurring problem with Oxidation? The Scarecrow, Dorothy, the Tin Man, or the Cowardly Lion? That's actually an easy one, believe it or not. The Tin Man. Finally. Now, he never admitted it, but uh, you could tell he had a pretty serious Oxidation problem because he kept getting rusty. Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Yo, have you been with nasty number 10? The category behind this question is divorce court and natural law. Pop a right answer for this one. You got 3,000 greenbacks. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Today on Divorce Court, Mrs. Newton sues Mr. Newton for a divorce, claiming when she pushed him, he did not react in an equal manner, thereby breaking the law. What law has he broken? Newton's second law of motion, the law of relativity, Newton's law of gravity, or Newton's third law of motion? Equal opposite reactions. It's, that was number two. Ouch. No, it was number three. 
And let's see uh. the answer. The third law of motion states for every action there must be an equal and opposite reaction. Yes. And of course, this law explains my need to vomit after watching Divorce Court. We've got ten questions down, and for ten more, we're going on to round two. <laughs> now pay attention, because all the questions in round two are worth more money. Let's do it. How about it? Hit me with a category. Yep, they've doubled the dollar values, so to speak. And now, eleven. All right, let's see what we're doing here. Astronomy and family ties. I'll pay you $4,000 bills for this one if you get it right. Haley's Comet last appeared in 1985, the same year little Andy Keaton was born on TV's Family Ties. Assuming he ages normally, how old will little Andy be the next time we see Haley's Comet? 76, 55, 16, or 80? The comet appears every 76 yep. years. That'll be 2061. And that erases just about all my Guess failure. Guess you should've looked the first time, huh? All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Uh-oh. West Got a second one. Nine more. Once again, it's time for a... Later. Once again. Here's your gibberish category. Very juvenile humor and body parts. The opening value for this gibberish question is going to be 10,000 bucks. Okay, now remember, the faster you solve this puzzle, the more money you win. Okay, ready? With what song title does this rhyme? Pale Tale, The Wang. Go for it. Type in your answer and hit... Category. And Question 13. This one's gonna be Greek mythology at the mall. This question's gonna be worth two thousand one dollar bills. Okay, hang tight. Put your fingers on your buzzers. Here's the question. You wanna take your buddy Achilles shopping for some new shoes before his next big battle. Now knowing his weakness, which of the following will offer him the best protection? Flip-flops, pumps, mules, or slingbacks? Okay, it's not a flip-flop or a mule. I don't know what a slingback is. Look at the pump. A nice pair of pumps. The only shoes in the group that would really cover Achilles' famous vulnerable heel. Alright, come on, hit me. We need a category. Mr. Scott Meets Pops Racer. The name in this category is Mr. Scott Meets Pops Racer. And if you can figure this one out, I can pay you 4,000 bucks. Imagine the chief engineer of the Star Trek Enterprise and Speed Racer's dad team up to design a new Mach 5 race car. If it's capable of a top speed of warp factor one, how fast can Speed Racer's new car go? 10 times the warp speed factor. of light, the speed of sound, the speed of light, or three times the speed of sound? Warp factor one, speed of light. The speed of light. I hope that car comes equipped with driver's side barf bags. Need a few other things too. How about it? Hit me with the category. Uh, yeah. Why not? Uh oh. A third so one? Wow. Once again, it's time for a Tinker Lake test drive. The category for this gibberish question? Geeks and Anatomy. And if you're really fast, you can get up to 10,000 bucks for this gibberish question. Now, you're going to have about 30 seconds to solve this puzzle, but I'm going to be taking a little bit of money away every second and a half. Okay, get yourself ready. Here comes the puzzle. What does this rhyme with? A nerd in the band biz dirth you in the took. Okay, let's see if you That's know it. That's fairly easy. What are you waiting for? If, you, if you're waiting for me to make some kind of a lame bush joke, it's not going to happen. Eh, uh, you know. Alright, come on, hit me. We need a category. Two lips on your organ. Wash your head down the latrine. Ease your way with sour cream. Sixteen. They were struggling Next for those up, rhymes. Next up, two lips on your organ. Uh, you're going to be pretty good if you get this one. It's worth 6000 bucks. Hang on tight, because here we go. Of these four technical terms, three are associated with musical organs. Choose the one associated with reproductive organs. Fimbria, Ew. diapason, mixture stop, or swell box. Swell box is a accordion, I think. I have no idea. 
Here's what you should have guessed. <laughs> Fimbria, the fringe on the fallopian tubes. Who would have huh. known the fallopian tubes were so hip as to wear fringe? Okay, pick a category. Slippery when wet. Why not? He's gone, let me hear you scream. It's question 17. The category, slippery when wet. I'm paying out $2,000 if you get this one right. Hey, how closely do you really examine condom packages? Of the following, which is the only word that cannot be formed from the letters in the word lubricated? Crab, date, tuber, or trick? <laughs> trick. There's no trick in lubricated. However, 9 out of 10 prostitutes surveyed said tricks should be lubricated. I can't argue with that one. With the category. The category is meat and meat byproducts. You get this question right, you pocket six grand. Get your eyes focused on the screen. Here we go. You're driving through Pennsylvania and you suddenly get a craving for a mush of fried hog shavings and cornmeal. You quickly pull into a diner. What do you order? Fitsum, scrud, scrapple, or scumble pie? I'm thinking Scrapple. Scrapple. Yep. Try it with Snapple. Yeah. Alright, come on, hit me. We need a category. We need Undead up in here. Here's the category. Breakfast cereal and the undead. A right answer will get you two G's for this question. Flight attendants, prepare for takeoff. Now every kid knows the classic triumvirate of the sugary monster cereals, Frankenberry, Boo Berry, and Count Chocula, but what was the discontinued fourth monster cereal? Rice Krypties, Cinnamon Corpse Crunch, Fruit Fruit, or Vanilla Godzilla? Tasted like lime and it was horrible. Fruit Fruit, the werewolf cereal. Yeah, that was terrible. Okay, pick a category. Ooh, ah, question number 20. This one's gonna be fashion crazes and movies from the 80s. And this one shouldn't be too tough. 4K for this one. The life of me, I cannot figure out what is the name of this movie. You know, it started that one sweat hog who said, whoa, when, where, and who was in that disco movie and started this whole western wear and mechanical bull riding craze. What is that called? Was it called Blowout, True Grit, Urban Cowboy, or The Electric Horseman? I'm pretty sure Travolta was in Urban Cowboy. Oh, God, you probably ran out and bought cowboy boots the day after you saw it. No. No, I didn't. How about it? Hit me with the category. Uh, let's see. Yes. It is still here. Time for the attack. Buzz in when two words match, and you got 2,000 bucks. Buzz in when there isn't a match, and you lose 2,000. And don't forget, it's not any old match we're looking for. It's the one that fits this clue. I seem to be missing something. Hope you're not missing your memory, because you'll need it for this. Ah, oh, my screen blanked out for a second. I missed hair. There it is. His anatomy. Almost click that one. You could say he's missing the heart too. Her eyes. Pupils actually. I like the music here. Clothes. At least for one afternoon. If that wasn't a myth. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just one. He only missed one ear. His sanity was also probably gone by that point, too. But he's more known for missing the ear. Damn, you kick some ass in that jack attack! Let's check out your score! 
game! Well, you kick butt. No two ways about it. Of course, it's not like you had any competition to make it a real challenge or anything, but, you know, that's not the point. The point is... You don't know Jack. Excellent show, everybody. Hey, um, uh, Cookie, uh, what are we going to do with this contestant? All right, if you want to play a game, you just got to let me know whenever you're ready, okay? Hey, Sheila, what'd you get for the Judeo-Christian Winter Holidays? Oh, so anyway. I got an Eleanor Roosevelt doll. Bummer. Yeah, so this is the original You Don't Mindy Know doll. Jack. You got a new Mindy? I got new Miami Beach Mindy. Look. Wow, and yes, it has commercials like the old one. And I got her little so, I'm going to play a few games wow, of this for you guys. Beautiful. Then With I'm going to move on to the second one as long as it records <laughs> properly. We'll I haven't tested out any of the other ones recording. I figure if nothing else, I can at least show you where You Don't Know Jack came from. And yes, this is available on Steam. Fairly cheap. Like three bucks. Seriously. It's only three bucks for this thing. Come on. It works. It's fun. Come on, Shasta. That was the So anyway, I will leave a few of these playing for you. Steven. And I will see you all next time for more You Don't Know Jack Volume 1. Take care, folks. I'm on to your scheming ways. What's the matter, Jimmy? Don't you find me attractive anymore? I mean, that's totally inappropriate. Oh, Samantha. On the next Pico Boulevard. Right after the season premiere of Buddies. Right, my name's Rex, and I'm waiting for you to telephone me. Will you be my raster? Whoopsie. I go proofy on the carpet. I've been a Brad Roggy, and I need a Sprinky. Maybe later, you can rub my rummy. I rub it when you rub my rummy. My rate goes crazy. I'm waiting for your crawl. Maybe later, you can give me a bone. Call 976-DOG today and spend some quality time with man's best friend. Hi, my name is Tammy, and I have a wart on my lip. I know you want to touch it and run your finger along its hairy surface. I wish you were here rubbing salve on it right now. And if you're very, very good, I'll let you rub ointment on my other moles and boils. Ooh, I can't wait. Call me. They're throbbing. Call 976-WART. $10 per minute.